I'm Trudy Loban and I'm the founder of Arrhythmia Alliance. And I'm joined today by three very special people. One who is immensely grateful to her two colleagues because they literally saved her from sudden cardiac death. Tanya, thank you so much for agreeing to share your story and bringing along Wanda and Jackie as well, who I'm sure in your eyes are just saints because they acted quickly, they knew what to do, and you're here today. So Tanya, I'm handing over to you. Please share your story with us and what happened on that day. Welcome. So I'm Tanya Blue, and I am um, a survivor of cardiac arrest. It's hard to even say that. Um, grateful for these two ladies and uh, the rest of the staff that all were instrumental that morning. Um, Wanda Evans, Jackie Cambright, and um, Sharon Berger, Debbie Holland, my teammates, Allie Harrison and Allison Hendricks, all played a part in my survival, taking care of my students, um, just everything for that day and continue to do so. It didn't stop on that day. So. Um, Honey, how, how did your day start? Normally? So my day started normally. Um, I came to school, got ready, you know, to have my things that I do in the morning to get ready um, before the students come in. And so we had uh, a normal morning. My son and I drove to school. Um, <clears throat> he went to his class and I continued to just get ready. We um, switched classes in the morning. So my spelling group was getting ready to come in. And so we switched classes. Um, Ms. Hambrot had actually come into my mm -hmm. room maybe 10, 15 minutes before um, this even happened. Um, and so she had popped in to say good morning. And so everything felt normal. There was nothing that I felt differently and nothing that she saw when she came into the room differently. Um, and so we went ahead and switched classes and I was administering a, a spelling test to my students. Um, and the only thing that felt off is at some point I felt a little dizzy. Like I felt like a, but it wasn't like a continual thing. And I can't place exactly when it happened in relation to me falling. Um, but all I remember is giving the test. And then that's all I remember until I could hear voices far away. Um, so it kind of felt like a dream. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. like we're talking right now. It felt very distant. And I could just hear commotion and I could hear talking. I can't tell you what was being said. Um, I could hear Miss Evans was in the room with me and I and I could hear her voice. I knew she was there. I couldn't tell you what she was saying, but I knew she was in there. Um, and the next thing after that I remember is waking up in the hospital in the emergency room. And when I woke up and was talking, um, Miss Hambright was there, my husband was there, and the nurses and, you know, hospital staff. So I don't have a memory of falling because it, it just happened so fast. I don't have a memory of falling. I don't have a memory of being in the ambulance. I just was standing at my podium. And the next thing I remember, I was when I was when I was woke up at the hospital. This is it with sudden cardiac arrest. Often there are no signs or symptoms. Sometimes there's a history of the odd faint, but for some, there are no signs or symptoms. And that's why it's so important. We all need to be aware and to have an AED nearby. Jackie, do you want to say what happened from, from your perspective? Sure. As Tony was just explaining, I walk around in the morning, Miss Evans and I do, and we say good morning to all of our teachers. So I was on the downstairs floor, walked in, everything seemed just as normal as ever. Her class was doing some positive yeah. affirmations, so they repeated them back to me, and it was really cute to see that, but 
we were getting ready to have a tour that morning. So we had prospective families in the lobby. The sevens and I were getting ready to go out and greet them when the students came kind of screaming around the corner. And we knew that that was not normal. If they needed something, they kind of would just come up and ask. So when they came up and we saw panic in them, Miss Evans and I both sprinted out of the office into her room. Thankfully, she's right around the corner. So we did not have to go that far. Um, we kind of assessed the situation. Wanda took over assessing Tanya. I took over getting all the students out of the room. Um, had somebody call 911 um, as soon as all the students were out and I got back into the room to assess what was going on. That's when Wanda said, get the AED. So I kind of ran to the lobby, grabbed the AED, and then we all kind of worked together to get it on her um, in that moment. And I was scrambling, trying to find her husband's phone number to get him on the phone as well, trying to just get all the pieces that I could think of in the moment because your adrenaline is just so high trying to figure out what to do. Um, but thankfully, we've all had CPR and first aid training. So it's kind of recalling those, somebody call 911, somebody get the AED. Um, but you kind of don't process it until after it all happened. We all kind of sat up after I went to the hospital and checked on Tanya. Um, when I came back to school, just to check on things here, it was one of those, we all processed it after the fact, but thankful that we all kind of knew what to do. And we had an AED very close by mm -hmm. and thankfully Miss Evans knew, like she just said, call, get the AED. And we did all the things that we thought we could. And we're so grateful that it worked out in our favor. Absolutely. Wonder what, what was going through your mind and you thought of the AED, thank goodness, which saved Tanya. It was really just luck, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, they tell you the CPR first aid training will come back to you and you'll just do it. it that was not the case for me. It was very intentional. Mm -hmm. um, so when the kids ran up the hall, I just happened to be the closest one to the door mm -hmm. by happenstance and got to Tanya first. She was face down on the ground. Um, and I heard what I came to realize was labored breathing. I didn't know, you know, when, when the students said that Miss Blue had fallen, mm -hmm. I thought, Okay, maybe she's lightheaded. Maybe she tripped. I don't think any of yeah. us really realized we were yeah. going to walk into what we walked mm -hmm. into. I truthfully thought like you had twisted an ankle or tripped and fallen down right. and just needed help getting up. So, I mean, we did run out of the <laughs> office, but we definitely did not mm -hmm. expect to walk into what what we had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then when she was laying there, um, you know, you go through all the things and I'm like, I, you know, did she break something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I realized when she wasn't responding to me, I couldn't worry about if she broke something at that point. I had to get her on her back. Mm -hmm. And then luckily, you know, Miss Holland, Debbie Holland had come in and I asked her to, I was like, call 911. Like she's, she's out, call 911. And then Jackie came back in um, and I was like, get everybody out. Because again, we had the tour up front mm -hmm. and I was, I just looked at Tanya and realized I had to do something. And it felt like all of this took 30 minutes for me mm -hmm. to process because time really does. It, it's so fast, but it slows down. Um, and I was really trying not to panic. It must have only been a minute or so because it, yes. I truly think um, it was in the matter of 90 seconds yes it was Which less is, than three minutes mm -hmm. when the first responders got here so all um, of this yeah mm -hmm. this happened very very quickly but you s see somebody that you adore and just love to pieces laying unresponsive and nothing can prepare you for that mm -hmm. nothing can prepare you for that and it takes a long time to get over. Um, 
I'm, I'm still yeah. not over it. I still peek into her window to make sure <laughs> yes. she's doing it. Right. Um, it just, it becomes, it, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, started CPR, um, Jackie came so back perfect. into the classroom. Mm -hmm. I asked her to get the AED. Luckily, we happened to have two nurses um, that had here. been here for a tour. Mm -hmm. So they asked if they could help. They came straight back. Um, and I, they, I was doing CPR. They took over CPR. We all figured out how to get the AED yeah. on, get, you know, everything yeah. going. Um, but just thank God, all the right people were in the right places yeah. for this to be a positive mm -hmm. outcome. And I did not realize how how different that is from the norm until after everything, after Tanya had made it back, mm -hmm. it made it to the hospital. Um, the EMT director came back to the school and he said that that's not an outcome he usually sees uh, yeah. when, when things like this happen. The fact that we praise the Lord had an AED, mm -hmm. um, which if anybody's nervous to use it, I will say it gives you the directions. And if you yeah. like separate yourself from panic mode, you you can read the directions. It. And, it tells you exactly step by yes, step where to put the pads. And what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it speaks to you. Yeah. It tells you all clear. It tells you to push yeah. the button to shock. I mean, truly it to me, what it made me feel safer than just doing CPR alone mm -hmm. because I could I, see what was going on. I think an AED is easier to use than a fire extinguisher because mm -hmm. yes. I don't know how to use a fire extinguisher, <laughs> but an AED, even if you've never seen one before, the mm -hmm. minute you open it, it mm -hmm. talks you through every yeah. step of the way mm -hmm. and you cannot harm anybody. Mm -hmm. If Tanya's heart hadn't been in that particular rhythm, it would not have shocked her because she wouldn't have needed it. If mm -hmm. you put it on yourselves today, it will not work because your hearts are all in rhythm. It mm -hmm. only works when you're in that fatal heart rhythm yeah. that leads to sudden death. And what she was saying about the panic and the time, it's like time stands still, but actually it's all happening very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the important thing to get across to anyone watching this video is that for every minute that passes, you have 10% less chance of survival. So the quicker you can commence CPR, call 911 and get that AED on, the greater the chances of survival. And thanks to you two ladies, Tanya's here sharing her story because as you say, it was less than three minutes. She had the greatest chance of survival. Never, ever hesitate to use an AED because if it's not needed, it won't work anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, giving that person that chance. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all three of you are just heroes, absolute heroes. It's it's fantastic. So Tanya, coming back to you, you woke up in the hospital? Yes, oh, I woke up. <clears throat> what are we doing here? <laughs> I woke up in the hospital and I saw um, Jackie and my husband there. Um and the different um, nurses and hospital staff that was there and they told me what happened, just not in any kind of detail, just mm -hmm. that I had a heart attack. Um, and then they started um, doing all kinds of tests all pretty much the day I had a procedure to see if it, my arteries were clear, uh, you know, that. They just did all kinds of different tests um, through, through the day. And then I went into the cardiac ICU and I stayed there for a few days. Um, that evening, I got to meet one of the nurses that was very instrumental mm -hmm. as well. Because she, it was actually the hospital that they both work mm -hmm. at. And so um, she came to see me that evening, which was nice that I got to meet her. Um, and so I was there in um, the cardiac ICU for a couple of days. 
And then as I started to improve, then I was put to the immediate intermediate floor. And that's where I stayed until I was discharged to go home. Um, and while I was in the hospital, um, they, that's, they put a defibrillator in, mm -hmm. um, was told pretty much that because I've already had an event that I shouldn't leave without one. And so I stayed until that was put in and, you know, I'm on different medication right now. And so they had to monitor the medication, everything before I was able to go home. So just to explain to any of any of our viewers, you now have your very own internal cardiac defibrillator, yes. which is very much like a pacemaker and it's monitoring your heart 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And should you ever, God forbid, go into that irregular heart rhythm, VT or VF as it's known, it will shock you. Yes. So you may you may fall to the floor, but at the same time it will shock you and you will come round. Mm -hmm. So you you're walking around with your instead of an AED, you've got an ICD, an internal one, mm -hmm. um, which is what most patients go on to have after they've had a sudden cardiac arrest. And just to clarify, a heart attack is to do with the plumbing of the heart, as you mentioned, whether you had blocked arteries, etc. And in that case, an AED doesn't help with that. Mm -hmm. um, a sudden cardiac arrest is to do with the electrics of the yes. heart. Yes, and that's what I had. Yeah. So the, I always say, you know, if your washing machine has a leak, it may flood your laundry room, but it may continue working. Whereas if you have a power outage with your washing machine, nothing, nothing mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. And that's the same, the difference between a heart attack and a sudden cardiac arrest. Hence why you needed that shock to get your heart back um, beating again. Mm -hmm. yes. And and how are you how are you feeling today, Tanya? I mean, how long has this been now? How many months? Well, this happened December 1st. 2020. So just after just about three months, just after three months. Yeah. Um, You're back at work. Yes, I went back mm -hmm. in January when we when we tracked back in because we were getting ready to go on break. When this happened, we had a few weeks left of school. And so mm -hmm. I stayed out um, all of December and came back mid-January when we went into our, our third quarter of school. Mm -hmm. So we're actually just finished our third quarter. So we're on break now again. Mm -hmm. and, and how are you feeling now? Overall, better. Um, I definitely can see the progress from when I first went home in December to now. Um, and I guess you don't realize what you can do until you can't do it. And so was glad the day I was able to start driving again, come back to work and kind of feel like you're getting back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, it can feel scary um, mm -hmm. recovering because <laughs> that fear of it happening again is there. And just feeling like this is a new normal. This is different. Life is different. Um, but through my family, my husband, my son, my community, um, my school community here, my church community, everybody has just kind of given me the strength to keep going because it's very easy to just say I just want to stay in bed I don't want to get up and go back to work and make dinner and you know just do all those things but you have to find the strength mm -hmm. because life still moves on you know and so I'm grateful for everyone that has come alongside me and help me keep moving forward and not stay back. So in that sense, doing better. <laughs> not that you don't have hard days. There's some days that it's harder than others that you think about those things and just kind of what happened. I'm still processing through that um, on most days. But... 
you have to move forward. Like you can't just stay back. You can't just not go on, you know, and so you have to find the strength. It is people in there. It is an emotional roller coaster. It is. And, and you it have is. to find that strength. Yeah. And and I'm sure you are thankful every single day that you're there to see your son grow older mm -hmm. and to be with your pupils and, and friends and family and, and loved ones. Yes. Um, you you know, you do have that device, you have survived, mm -hmm. but it is the shock for you and yes. for everyone around you. I'm sure Wanda and Jackie, you've gone through emotions as well because your adrenaline, as you said earlier, Jackie, your adrenaline kicks in and you deal with the emergency in that moment. And it's only afterwards mm -hmm. that it can hit you. And it can hit you months, years later. Having gone through it myself, I know it can still happen. But looking for the positive, you yeah. saved a life. And Wanda, you've been saved and you have that chance, as you're doing today, which we're so grateful to help save others, people you probably will never, ever meet, but sharing your story. And unbelievable, you're back at work. And to all intents and purposes, leading a normal life, but mentally having to process it as well. Yes. Um, and I've, I've started um, cardiac therapy as well. Mm -hmm. that started a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. that's a 12-week program to help just regain your strength and it's a group class of their support um, and so that has started as well and so I'm in the process of um, doing that to get stronger to get better and you will make it, you have a, such a fantastic support team and you also now have a Rhythmy Alliance that will support you, your family, the teachers, your co-workers, everyone to, you know, it's a fantastic survival, but it doesn't end the day that you survive. It is ongoing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I think that's the part that um, for me is the, that's where the adjustment is. You know, how do you, put in all the pieces back in life, you know, taking care of your family and your your work and um, just your activities, you know, that you did before and putting those pieces back in so that you can feel like you're back to normal. You know, yeah. so that's a process. Tanya is not one to ask for help. <laughs> um, no, because she's usually the one helping others. <laughs> so we have been very blessed that I mean our staff has stepped up in mm -hmm. so many ways to so that that way she knows it's okay. Like we are truly here to help. This yeah. is a new normal for you. It's a new normal for everyone, mm -hmm. but use your resources it you know you would help any of us yeah. so mm -hmm. don't hesitate to ask us for help yes yeah. and that was a that was hard for me <laughs> because so you know the saying it's okay not it's okay. to be okay yeah mm -hmm. and so yes everyone has has pitched in I wouldn't have made it through this quarter without the support of everyone here like doing all kinds of things to help um you know, get through the day and keep up with everything. So that has been amazing. It's been fantastic. And all thanks to just a little box that could yeah. talk to you. Yeah. You weren't aware, but for Jackie and Wanda, that box literally saved your life and told them what to do. And that's why we campaign that... ADs should be as common as fire extinguishers and smoke alarms. Mm -hmm. There should be one on every street corner. There should be one in every business, outside every business, outside every church, um, you know, schools. There's no point just having one or two, depending on how large, you know, there needs to be one out on the sports field. When they go to other schools, there should be one on the bus. Uh, all these, these different things. 
because they truly are lifesavers. And for anybody wanting to find out more information about AEDs, about the ICD that you have, or gone through a similar experience as Tanya, please contact Arrhythmia Alliance or go to www.dfibssavelives.org and all the information is there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing the story. I know it will resonate with thousands of families that have gone through something similar, but hopefully it will also encourage more people, more families, more businesses, more schools to ensure that they are heart safe with the placement of an AED. Tanya on the Jackie, any final words that either of you would like to say? We're just so thankful that we get to love and squeeze on her every day <laughs> that we get to see her. <laughs> yes, it definitely was not an option. We yeah. are so very thankful that we were in the right place at the right time. We had an AED. We had, you know, nurses that happened to be here as well, staff, and the kids jumped in immediately mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it made yeah. us aware of what was going mm -hmm. on. It truly was best case scenario. And we cannot thank God enough mm -hmm. for giving us extra time with Tanya. Yes, I am so grateful, thankful that God was there with us, that he could help us help Wanda and Jackie know what to do, that they acted quickly, that they have continued to support me. Um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my family, my husband, who continues to support me at home, my son, who I didn't have to say goodbye to that day. Every time I think of that, it just gives me chills because it happened so fast, mm -hmm. you know, there was no, there was no thinking. So I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful to be here.